If you use a CNC for trimming holster parts or you're thinking about using a CNC for trimming holster parts, there's a lot of things to think about about how to hold them in the machine securely so you can change them over quickly and so you don't lose good parts if they break free and get wrecked in the machining process. So here's a quick breakdown of what we have going. If you look here, we have an aluminum subplate in our machine. It's a master subplate. Almost all of our trim fixtures run on this. They all share a pin system. They all share a bolt hold down system. So we've got hardened threaded inserts in the aluminum subplate. This all sits on a Mighty Bite Vac Magic 100. So we supply vacuum directly through the pallet and through our fixture so that we can use vacuum to hold our parts in place. Here's an example of how we would make an actual trim fixture. It's got a sticker on it, tells me what company, mine, Henry Holsters. This is a Glock TLR7 trim mold and it calls out the program number so the operator can put this down and quickly come over to the control, enter the program number. I have the machine off right now because the phase converter is really loud and buzzy. But they can enter that program number, pull it up, confirm that that matches the initial comment on the program and then it's ready to run. So to load this up, it's got pinholes, well, yeah, alignment pinholes on the bottom and channels to connect the various vacuum zones. This goes down. We have four quarter 20 bolts with washers. The wrench that I need to attach these is right here at the machine. Even though I have a full set of these T-handle wrenches, the only two that are here at the machine are the ones that I need for fixtures and vice jaws. All the other ones are in a bag at the bottom of a drawer somewhere in my tool cabinet because I don't need them and I certainly don't need to be digging through them trying to find the two that I use all the time. So this gets bolted down and then we would lay a shell directly on top and turn on the vacuum and the vacuum would hold the shell down. But you also see we've got two rare earth magnets set into the fixture and those are there for security. You can use magnets to completely hold a shell as long as you have enough magnets in enough key places. I prefer vacuum because it helps uh, dampen vibration and reduce edge chatter when we're trimming, but we do like to have magnets on there just as security. It allows us to put a shell that has no through holes in it down and not need to have any screws going through it. What we used to do was a two-step process where all of our forming molds had a couple of pin indicators on them and we would take those to the drill press and we would pre-drill those spots manually and then use those as our hold down locations and run screws through the part to hold it to the fixture, which works fine and it's very secure. It's very reliable, but it's slower. You gotta take, you know, put the screws on and take them off every cycle. And magnets are just way faster. One of the other cool things about magnets is they're self-aligning. So right here at the front of the machine, I have a little HDPE strip, uh, double side taped to the lip of the machine. And that's partly to keep the magnets from scuffing the paint, but also because standing them off from the metal a little bit makes them easier to pick up and put down without them being stuck on so hard. We have them in little 3D printed red jackets that have a curved side, so it's easier to get a grip on them. You've got a little bit of a lip to grab to pick them up, and it also makes them easy to see inside the machine. If I ever accidentally drop one inside the machine, I want to find it again, because I don't want some magnet hanging around in here, sticking to who knows what and potentially causing problems. So, the same way that I pull out only the hardware bins I need, this fixture only takes two magnets. So I'm gonna take these ones, Stick them over here where we keep our extra magnets. So the only magnets that I have out when I'm running these parts are exactly the ones that I need. And I know that if I see magnets, if I'm getting ready to start the machine cycle, I'm standing here, I look down, I see magnets there. I know I have not put magnets on the part. If I had 15 magnets there and I was adding two to the part, it would be easier for me to miss the fact that I have not put them in because there's still plenty of magnets there and I'm not gonna count them all. So I would lay a shell down I would turn the vacuum on and then I would drop my magnets on top and they're self aligning. They snap in place and they're just inside the trim path. Obviously I don't have a shell in place. And then we would pull up the program. We would engrave Henry holsters, model information, slots and holes for the various belt attachments and then trim the outside of the part. When the cycle's done, the machine retracts to home, turn the vacuum off, blow the chips off, pull the two magnets, set them here, swap shells, vacuum, magnets, close the door and run it. It's a very simple, easy, intuitive system that gives me the advantages of vacuum work holding, the security of magnets, because the only real downside of vacuum work holding is if your vacuum seal fails, all your work holding fails all at once, which means your part goes from being very securely held to being completely unheld. If you have screws, 
even if your vacuum fails, your part's not going anywhere. It might chatter around the edges when you trim it, but it's not gonna come off. And magnets do a similar job for us where they provide that measure of security so that even if we had a fussy shell that didn't wanna vac down all the way or it was leaky or we had an older fixture that needs to be redone, the magnets will give us the security of knowing the part's not gonna suddenly fly off and get wrecked. So that's how we do our stuff. A lot of holster makers use much larger, like two by four, four by four, four by eight CNC routers and have individual locations that are sort of permanently mounted for all their individual holsters. And that's a very legitimate workflow, but it has a couple of disadvantages. First of all, your operator is often having to lean way out onto the table to get to something that's deep in the middle. Everything here is in the same place. It's at a nice height. You can see it clearly. It's super well lit. All our mess is contained. You will never come by and find a whole pile of HDPE chips on the floor of the shop because we're running a fully enclosed mill. One of the other advantages is this machine is very fast and accurate and is very rigid. It doesn't chatter, it doesn't jump around. It gives me beautifully clean cuts. And I have an auto tool changer. We cut all of our fixtures in place on this pallet and then we use them in our production workflow in place on this pallet. So I'm not making them over here and then mounting them up here and hoping my work coordinate system is close enough to be accurate. Everything is made on a shared work coordinate system so that I know that every single part has exactly the same X, Y, Z, zero because it's never been changed from the day that the fixture was made and we started running production, it's always been the same. That builds a lot of inherent consistency into our process and it also allows us to do really, really fast changeovers. So if I just finish running these parts and I need to make something else, I can just grab a driver. This is the driver that takes those bolts out. Comes right off and I'm ready to put the next fixture down. I'll call up its program number off the label, enter it here, throw the next part down, reset my magnet number, verify the vacuum system is sealing properly, and I'm ready to run. Changeover is under a minute to go from one part to another part. So if in the course of the day, we had a bunch of orders come in for Smith & Wesson Shield holsters and our inventory ran out in the course of the day, we can quickly vacuum form 10 more. I can pause production on this machine, pull that fixture off, put a Shield fixture on, run those 10 shells, and go right back to what I was doing. There's no probing, there's no resetting work coordinates, everything's shared, everything stays the same. You just change the fixture pallet out, and I don't have the issue, even if I had a two or a four or a six gang pallet, if there's any margin of error, and this is especially an issue with um, smaller, less robust machines, that margin of error increases as you travel distance. So if you've got an A, B, C, and D location, and they're all cutting the same part, your A part and your D part might not be 100% the same. And that gets multiplied over time. If your machine loses steps or has to be rehomed or there are other things going on, you can gradually lose the focus of your coordinate system and have your parts start to display enough inconsistency that it becomes a problem. If I revise something, I'm also not having to recut a bunch of fixtures or a large fixture. Almost all of our trimming fixtures are made out of eight and a half by eight and a half, or in some cases, 10 by 10 stock for bigger things. That's a standard size. We have it pre-cut, I have it on the shelf. If I need to make a new fixture, I just throw the old one away. I drop a fresh piece on. It's held entirely by vacuum while I machine the whole thing. I put my through holes in, because my through bolt holes are outside my vacuum zone. So drilling through to them doesn't break my vacuum seal. I can make a fresh fixture in 15 minutes or so, cut in some gasketed zones, put some fresh gasket material in, take it over to the Arbor Press, set some magnets in it, and I'm back up and running with a completely fresh, brand new fixture that still shares the same original work coordinate system. So that whole process is very robust. It's not the fastest possible process, but it's dependable, it's reliable. I don't have to stress thinking about it. I know how it works. I've got all the cam and everything templated for it, and it means that my employees can go over here to our work and process shelf, which you can take a quick look at here. We have a whole bunch of parts that are here ready to be trimmed or have been partially trimmed or been trimmed and are ready to go to buffing. And they can go and pull any part there. We have little traveler cars that go with them so they know what it is. They can load a fixture up, bolt it down, turn the vacuum on, call up the program, and run the parts. So my employees can run production, do changeovers, keep track of whatever mix of stuff they have to throughout the day, and I don't have to be here at the machine monitoring them, making changes, 
and there are no weird exceptions like, oh, these 10 holster molds run this way, but this one runs on a different work coordinate system. And it, nope, we standardized all that and got rid of it. Every single trim fixture for a holster runs on the same work coordinate system. And it's made our life here so much easier. I highly recommend it.